Salawam. Call Halal Yahawa Bahashim Yahawashai Bahasham Raka Kwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this truth and rule well. Salutations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you I say Shalawam. To the Akiyam and to the Akwaf. I'll be you brothers and sisters. Adawan Rataza. That is to say Lord willing. Hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll be edified. This is your brother Amawan Aibad. Back again with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. To feed the lambs of Yahweh. Yahweh Shai. As commanded. This lesson today I'm going to entitle it. The Lord divided the waters and held still and held still the flood in ancient times so shall a standard be lifted in these times to come okay the lord divided the waters and held still the flood in ancient times so shall a standard be lifted in these times to come now to be honest with you <laughs> i'm not sure if that's um if that's going to fit in the uh, the title if the title is going to fit in uh, on 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 the youtube when i actually post the video i don't know if it's a little bit too long but that's what's on my spirit okay once again the lord divided the waters and held still the flood in ancient times so shall a standard be lifted in these times to come and lord willing to do fit <laughs> okay but um yeah so i was um listening to the bible audio i was listening to the book of joshua and it got it, it got down to the uh fourth the fourth verse so like in the fourth chapter and it was going into how the lord um uh, dried up the water in jericho so you know spirit got on me to uh make a lesson because i know it was other other accounts in there where um the lord either held still still the flood or divided the waters and i was saying i was saying to myself that's a lesson right there bro so you know i just i stopped listening to the bible audio and I start writing down, uh, you know, scriptures. So, Lord willing, this lesson be edifying. Once again, the title, The Lord divided the waters and held still the flood in ancient times. So shall a standard be lifted in these times to come. Okay? So, let's get into it. This is the book of Exodus. Exodus, the 14th chapter. And it says, And the Lord spoke. Speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pahaharath Peha between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness hath shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am Yahweh, and they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt, the people fled, so like that, that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people, that they said, why have we done this, that we have let Israel go, from serving us. And it says verse 6. <clears throat> and he made ready his chariot. So Pharaoh, Pharaoh now decided in his heart. The Lord hardened his heart again. Pharaoh decided that he going to come after the children of Israel. It says. And took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots. And all the chariots of Egypt. And captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with an high high hand but the Egyptians pursued after them all the all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Paharath before Baal Zaphon okay and it says and when Pharaoh drew nigh the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, 
And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? And our people, boy, they, they, they was lacking faith. After all, the Lord did in Egypt for them to bring them so far. They still was lacking faith. Verse 12, it says, Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And that's, that's, that's just, that's just the, the set of our people that lacks faith, you know. <laughs> they, they, they just, they just want to continue to be a slave. Verse 13, it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, okay, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forth. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. So the Lord instruct Moses to, to lift up his hand with his rod over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry and go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. So, this is the wondrous, wondrous works of the Lord. Okay, our people went on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Verse seventeen it says, "And I be and I behold, I I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, and upon his chariots, and upon." His horsemen and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went be behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. This is that's the chariot, man. Okay, that's the chariot. It says that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these. Okay, so so that the one came not near the other all the night. Okay, so that 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 chariot was in between. Okay, as darkness to uh, to the to the Egyptian, but a light for our people. Verse 21, it says, As Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Okay, that's the point. The waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass in that morning, so like it came to pass that in the morning, watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire, it's like it through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels. That they, drive, that they drive them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fight it, fight it for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. So they all drowned in the watermen chasing after Israel. Okay, the Lord set them up, hardened Pharaoh hard. To, to make his, 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 his army chase behind our people, the children of Israel, you know, on the dry ground in, in, into that sea. 
Okay, and when the children of Israel came out on the other side, the Lord had Moses to stretch his hand out again to make the sea come back together and drown them, man. Okay, it says, and the waters returned, verse 28, uh, Exodus chapter 14 and verse 28, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them, but the children of Israel walk upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left thus the lord saved israel that day out of the out of the hand of the egyptians and israel saw the egyptians dead upon the seashore and israel saw that great work which the lord did upon the egyptians and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and his servant moses okay so that's 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 one account you know, of the Lord, you know, dividing the water, right? That we might go upon dry land, you know, and overpass, overpass on the dry land, you know? The Lord divided the waters and held still the flood. In ancient times, so shall a standard be lifted in these times to come. Let's get that account in the book of Joshua. Let's get that account in the book of Joshua because, you know, after Moses uh, was Joshua, right? Let's get uh, Joshua. We're going to get Joshua the fourth chapter. This is Joshua the fourth chapter. And it says, And it came to pass when all the people, <coughs> lucky, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take ye hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and he shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place, where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your power into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of, of you a stone upon his shoulder according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel this that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come saying what mean ye by these stones then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it was when it passed over Jordan the waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the ark of the covenant stood. And they are there unto this day. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And the peoples hasted and passed over. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over that the ark of the Lord passed over and the priests in the presence of the people and the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel that they fear him and as fear him as they feared Moses. All the days of his life. And the Lord spake unto Joshua saying. Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony. That they come up out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests saying. Come ye up out of Jordan. And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Were come up out of the midst of Jordan. And the soles of the priests feet were lifted up unto the dry land. <coughs> that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all its banks as they did before. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of, 
of the first month and encamped in Gilgal, in, in Gilgal, in the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. Okay. Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord, your power dried up the waters and Jordan of Jordan from before you until ye were passed over as the Lord, your power did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. That all the people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that he may fear the Lord, your power forever. Okay, so it, the Lord dried up the water, man. Okay, it says, For the Lord your power dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over, as the Lord your power did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. Okay, so hey, that's the point, man. The Lord divided the waters and held still the flood in ancient times, so shall a standard be lifted up in these times to come. Okay, amen. The Lord, the Lord is going to deliver his elect, man. Okay, so hey, from ancient time, the Lord been looking after our people, man. Okay, he made that promise, uh, uh, you know, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. Lord, Lord is a man of his word, man. All right, that's, that's what it is, you know. From there, we're going to go to the Apocrypha. We're going to get the account of um, those those 10 tribes that, that were carried away. Uh was that uh you know after king solomon uh the kingdom of israel was uh, split into two kingdoms under rehoboam and jeroboam okay and then um the northern kingdom went into captivity under king uh shalamanasah the fifth of, of assyria during the time of hosea okay you could have, you could find that account in second Ezra, right here second Ezra, the 13th chapter I'm going to start at verse uh, 39. Okay. It says, And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea king, the king, whom Shalmaneser, right, the king of Assyria led away captive and he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land, right? But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go further into another country where no mankind dwelt, okay? And this, this is how, uh, who you call the Native Americans, this is how they got into the Americas, man. This, they, 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 they the Northern Kingdom. Okay, they they the tribes, okay, what what they call in history the lost tribes. Well, they the tribes of, of the northern kingdom, man. Okay, they first came into the America. So that myth with with Christopher Columbus discovering, that's bull crap, man. Okay, our people was the first set of people in 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 in, in, the, in the Americas, man. Okay, it says verse forty two. Let me read verse forty one again. It says, but they took. This counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where no man, where never mankind dwell. Okay, so n nobody was there before they get there. Okay, but those were Israelites, man. Okay, who you call uh, Native Americans, the so called Negroes, that uh, you so called uh, Slakia, you so called uh, 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 Latino and, uh, and indigenous people in the land. Okay. All right? They was our people, man. Who, who they was calling Aztecs. Okay? Aztecs and Arawans, Arawaks and Mayans. They they are people, man. Okay? Uh verse 42 it says that they might keep their statues which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. 
For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. See? Hey, back to the title of the lesson. The Lord divided the waters as he did in, 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 in Egypt. Okay? And held still the flood. In ancient times, so shall a standard be lifted in these times to come. And you're going to see a standard is going to also be lifted in these times too. You know? It says, um, And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river, for the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. Right? It says, and this is how you know, verse 45, this is how you know it's talking about the Americas. It says, For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And the same region is called Asareth. And now that's another name. That's another name for, for it. Asareth. Okay, you have Ophir and you have Asareth. Both of them is, is, is the Americas, man. And now that's information where they don't really want you to know. When you really search for it sometimes, the, 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 you, would, you wouldn't see it come up saying America, but you can see certain articles would come up. But not only that, even Christopher Columbus knew that Asterisk was, 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 was the Americas because why? Uh, he got that information from out of the same chapter, man, out of the Apocrypha. That's another reason why the Apocrypha was taken out of, out of, out of, out of the Bible and they gave you the slave Bible because this book have all the history showing that our people, that Christopher Columbus didn't discover here. Our people was here before him. He, he, he met our people here when he came. But yet, they have him up as some hero as if he discovered. Okay? So, hey, <laughs> don't worry. His, the history is going to be re rewritten. <laughs> anyway. All right? But um, I'm going to prove to you that verse 45 is talking about the Americas. Because King Solomon had ships that used to come to Ophir. Okay? King Solomon had ships. Let, let, let's get that real quick and we're going to come back to it. Let's go to, uh, real quick. Let's go to um, 1 Kings, the ninth chapter. This is 1 Kings, the ninth chapter. I'm going to start at verse 26. It says, And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Ezion Geber, which was beside Eloth on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. And Hiram sent in the navy his servants, shipmen that had knowledge of the sea, with the servants of Solomon, right? And who was Solomon? Solomon was the Israelite, king of Israel, the son of David, right? It says, verse 28, And they came to Ophir, Ophir and fetched from thence gold, 420 talents, and brought it to King Solomon. So this Ophir is talking about America, man. Now, how are we gonna know how are we gonna know this America? Let's go to First Kings, the tenth chapter, right? First Kings, the tenth chapter. It says, and 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 all. I'm gonna start at twenty-one. King, First Kings, chapter ten, verse twenty-one. It says, and all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forests of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king had at sea a navy of Tarshish with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tarshish bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. So Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and wisdom. So the point is in 22, for the king had a sea, at, at, for the king had at sea a navy of Tarshish with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years, this is the point, once in three years came the navy of Tarshish bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. It says once in three years, okay, once in three years, meaning it was a year and a half to go and a year and a half to come. Now let's go back. It says once in three years. So, 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 King Solomon's navy; those ships would come back to 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 to, to Israel, to Jerusalem, right? Once in every three years, right? So that means it was a year and a half going and a year and a half coming back. Now let's go back to uh, Second Ezra, the thirteenth chapter, and the, the forty-fifth verse, where it says, "For though." For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Asareth. 
okay so yeah it, it took a year and a half to go and a year and a half to come back that's why i tell you in first kings okay first kings chapter uh 10 and verse uh 20 it tells you that king Sh uh, solomon ships was coming back to him once every three years because it took a year and a half to go and a year and a half to come back so this is the same place where those tribes went okay for through that country there was a great way to go namely of a year and a half and the same region is called Asherith. Okay, so this Asherith is talking about the Americas, man. All right? Where the tribes went. And, and, and that's where Christopher Columbus got this information from. And they try to hide this information, man. Verse uh, 46, it says, they dwelt, they dwelt there until the latter time. And now when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the springs of stream again. And they sh that they may go through. Therefore sowest thou the multitude with peace. Right? Verse 48, it says, But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. Right? Now, this is talking about the elect. Okay? But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. Right? How we can prove that? Let's go to 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter. It says, it says, that are found within my borders. 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter, starting at the 7th verse. Right? This is talking about the elect predestinated to found south, south, salvation. Okay, it says, um, second Ezra the ninth chapter and verse seven. It says that everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. Okay, because they were being diligent seeking the Lord. It says, whereby ye have believed, verse eight, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, okay, within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So the Lord predestinated the elect uh, to salvation from before the foundation of the world, okay? It says, shall be preserved from the sad perils, okay? And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. It says, within my borders, okay? So, it says, verse 48 again, 2nd Ezra chapter 13 and verse 48. But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders, the elect. Verse 49, 2nd Ezra 13 and verse 49 says, Now when he destroyed the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. That's those that are left, that those that are, 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 are uh, right here. The above verse 48 says, but those that are left behind, of thy people are they that are found within my borders, meaning the elect. Now when he destroyed the multitude of the nations, they are gathered together. He shall defend his people that remain. So, yeah, he's going to defend his people, right? Now, what he's defending his people from? Let's go to Revelation. Let's get, uh, remember the title of this lesson, The Lord divided the waters and held still the flood in ancient times. So shall a standard be lifted in these times to come. So in ancient times, the Lord held still the flood, meaning the water, literally water, right? But now we're going into we're going into uh, the flood, meaning uh, more like a, the, an, an army, okay? Just like how Pharaoh had his army chasing behind the children of Israel, but the Lord actually held still the flood, the physical water. Well, this time, this this this, this flood is going to be this flood is, is, is going to be likened onto an army. Okay, so let's get Revelation chapter 12, and verse 12. This is what the Lord is going to deliver the elect from. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe, woe means the destruction. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time, okay, or the book of Job chapter 14 and verse 5 speak about the boundaries that, that this man is not going to be able to cross, okay, so at the end of the day, because he know he had but a short time, he's filled with wrath, and his horns are showing he's going to come out the children of Israel, he's going to come after the woman, okay, but a standard is going to be lifted up, okay, a standard is going to be lifted up, Let's get that in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah uh, 59 chapter. Isaiah 59 verse 19. Right? 
It says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy, who's the enemy? Esau, Edom. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, right? So you see, it's likened unto a flood. When the enemy, his troops, his military power, when the, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, okay, so his, his troops, his power is being likened unto a flood. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So it's not a, it's not a physical water flood, it's a physical uh, power, physical, um, like a military power, okay, that's being likened to a flood. It says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Okay, so this is the reason why you're going to need that standard to be lifted up. Because the, 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 the enemy is going to come in like a flood. And a flood, a flood is something that would overwhelm you if you don't have a, a life jacket, so to speak. A hedge of protection. That's what you're going to need that... You're going to need that, that lifeline. And that's where Yahweh Bashim Shai comes in if you're doing the right things that you're supposed to be doing. Keep giving all diligence to make your cause and election sure. You know what I'm saying? Uh, being brotherly, uh, showing charity, all of, that, all of that good stuff in righteousness, in justness. Okay? And how, how, how are the elect going to be delivered? How is that standard going to be lifted up? Let's go to Revelation. We're going to get two more scriptures and we're going to close it up. Revelation, the 11th chapter and the 12th verse. It reads, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. Okay, these are these, these rest now who was found uh, within in the Mosai's borders. Okay, it says, And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. Okay, meaning not a cloud in the sky, but a vehicle. The chariot of Israel, as Elisha said. My father, my father, the chariot of Israel. Meaning the vehicle, the vehicle of our Lord, which is the vehicles of our salvation. Okay, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. Okay, our enemies going to be beholding you and ain't nothing they're going to be able to do. Right? For the Lord, the Lord is going to uh, uh, save his people. Okay, which Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, the angel told, the angel Gabriel told Mary that she's going to have a son, his name is going to be called Yahawashai, for he shall save his people. Okay, his name is a nomen omen, which is Latin for name prediction. Okay, because he's going to deliver, he's going to save his people. Right? And when he saves his people, he's going to punish the wicked. Let's get that, we're going to close out right here in the book of Isaiah chapter 26, uh, start of verse 20. It says, come my people into thou into thy chambers. Who is, who is the Lord's people? The elect. Come my people into thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Okay, that's that's entering inside, being beamed up and entering inside the chariots, the vehicles of salvation. Hide thyself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation, until the indignation be overpassed. Okay, the indignation be overpassed. Verse 21, it says, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Okay, so the Lord, you know, is going to come to deliver his elect. You know, he's going to send the angels to, to, gather the, the, to gather together the elect from the four winds. Okay, that's that standard being lifted up. As a matter of fact, that, that scripture comes to mind, so I'll just grab it and then I'll close up with that. Real quick, let's go to the book of uh, Matthew because America is going to be one of the places, this is the main place of deliverance, but you do have other places where um, the elect is going to be gathered from. So let's get it real quick and then we close with this. Matthew chapter 24, uh, starting at verse uh, 30. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in, in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Meaning those chariots again. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, 
from one end of heaven to another, to the other. So, like here. so you see, that's that standard being lifted, man. Okay, the Lord divided the waters and held still the flood in ancient times. So shall a standard be lifted in these times to come. And that's that standard, man. Hey, so hey, with that, call the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Hopefully you're edified. On to the next one. Shalom.